We're going to look at the retention and acquisition calculation in two parts. Part one will be considered like retention acquisition 101, and part two will be more like a, I'll say 301 or 401 level of retention acquisition calculation. For my first example, I've got an, loaded onto my screen here 1,000 donors, and I can see that if I go down to the bottom, it stops at row 1,001, the first row being the headers. Uh, that gives me 1,000 full records. Makes my math a little bit easier to do at the moment. To find my retention, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a simple count of the uh, donors that who donated in 2012 who also donated in 2013. The way I'm going to do that is to use the Excel's filtering command for this. So I'm going to go to data and filter. Now what I'm going to filter for when I select the down arrow is I'm going to select all those that uh, gave more than zero. In other words I'm going to select everything but zero. When I do that, on the bottom of the screen, it tells me 863, 863. So what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom right now, and I'm just going to make a note that I had 863 donors in 2012. Continuing over to my 2013 column, again, I'm looking for those that I have retained. And so once again, I'm looking for those with everything but zeros. Click OK and my number now goes to 618. So don't watch that corner uh, number down here. That'll tell you how many you had. 618. So my retention is equal to 618 divided by 863 or about 72 percent. If I come to my home and select the percent symbol and maybe even expand a decimal or so, I show my 71.6% for retention. Well, let's go see what I've got for acquisition in this same table. I will return all records to my screen by going to Data and Clear the Criteria. That'll put all 1,000 records back on my screen. Now, acquisition. That would be those people who donated in 2013. Again, I'm selecting everything but zero. 2013, and for this I've got 755 of those. I need to add to this criteria those who did not give last year. So I'm going to select only the zeros from last year. And this now gives me a number of 137. So down in the corner here again, 137 out of 1,000 records. So I've actually almost got my calculation done for me here. 137, my acquisition. is equal to 137 divided by the 1,000 current donors that I have in my database, or 13.7 percent. There we go. If you'd like to make a quick graph out of this, I'll highlight these four cells. I'll go to Insert, and I will choose a column chart. And I can make it two-dimensional or three-dimensional, kind of like 3D. I might want to add data labels to this. So I'll right mouse click and say add data labels. Pull these up just a little bit. If you'd like to see the chart in its own window, right mouse click the chart and find the move chart command. I'm going to say new chart and you can name it whatever you like. I can say retention, acquisition, abbreviation. I'll click OK. It'll create its own new tab for retention and acquisition next to my, in my case, the 1000 tab showing my chart, at which point, of course, I can enhance this chart in many, many ways, which will not be covered in this video. In front of you right now, I've got a spreadsheet loaded up with donor transactions that have occurred over numerous years. And the way you'll see I've got it laid out is I've got a transaction ID in the column A, 
a donor ID in column B, the last name, first name, columns C and D, the date, donation date, and the donation amounts in columns D and F. Now the important part of this is that you have some sort of a unique identifier that will break the ties between first and last names. In other words, two different John Smiths in your database, you do not want it to consider them to be the same John Smith. So a donor ID is used here in order to distinguish one from another. You could use address or anything else that might make it unique uh, between one donor and another. In my case, the donor ID. So the most important columns that I've got listed here are columns B, C, D, E, and F. This is the source of our data. This will be the, the, the basis of our calculation. And in the end, we're going to see the retention and the acquisition rates for uh, each year laid out side by side. I've added a couple of extra columns here that will help us in the analysis part of this. The first one is a concatenation of the name and ID. So you'll see last name, first name, and the ID column is concatenated into this field here. And I've highlighted the formula for how I did that in this text box. So if I place my cursor here, you'll see that it's the exact same formula. You'll also notice that the, as I move from cell to cell, the references to each row change. When I'm on row four, it's referring to the cells in row four, and so on. I've done the same thing to extract the year because I want to do my analysis on a year-by-year -year basis. So again, I've done another formula over here in column N, which extracts just the year portion of the date. So in cell N2, I'm referring to the year value of cell E2, and I've indicated that formula down here in this text box as well. The next thing we're going to do is do a pivot table off of columns M and N. And the way we do that is by going to the Insert menu, which I've already got highlighted, go to the Pivot Table, choose Pivot Table. Now, assuming my cursor was somewhere in this table, it's already selected the right block. In fact, I'll, make an, I'll state that again. Assuming my cursor was somewhere in this table, anywhere in this table, the Pivot Table will already select the correct block of information that I'll be using. If your cursor is somewhere outside of that, when I choose Pivot Table, it really doesn't know what to pick as the source. So I'll return to Pivot Table. It's chosen the right block already. I'll click the OK button. It'll bring over the list of possible columns to be used in my, in my Pivot Analysis. What I'm going to be using is the concatenation of the name ID and the year. I'll bring the name ID down to my row labels. So by dragging the name ID down into the row labels area, I'm creating a unique list of the combination of first name, last name, and donor ID. The next thing I want to do is bring, bring the year across the top, which I've already calculated that in the previous tab. And I'll place that there. Now I have my transactional years from, one, from 2000 to 2012. And the last thing I'm going to do is bring a amount down. Donation amount will be tabulated in here. Now I'll close this window and I'll expand these columns out or set them to the same width. There we go. Now I can see that Martha gave in 2008. She gave in two, again in 2011 and 2012 and the grand total dollars are listed here. Going to the bottom of the list I can see the grand totals down here for all the contributions that were made in each of those years. The next thing I need to do is to get my count for the number of donors I have in each year as my, that will serve as my denominator for my retention and acquisition rates. Well, I do that by coming to the bottom of this table and I'll just label this row as count and I'll begin a formula. Now, the formula will be count, but I don't know what the starting point and the ending point exactly is. Actually, I can see the ending point the ending point is going to be this B1465. So let's go back and to the top and get the starting point. Well, the starting point is B5. In, in the year 2000, it's B5. And then the bottom is 1465. So let's start the formula again. And say equals count B5 colon B1465. 
and there it is. I have 86 donors in the year 2000. If I copy this formula across, and I can do that pretty quickly by just highlighting these cells and then doing a control R, and it'll calculate the uh, number of donors I have in each year. I'm going to start referring to cells inside this pivot table up here, and as I do that, it's going to create some very ugly looking formulas. So I'm going to have to convert this area to, to values first. And here's what I mean by that. Let's just say that I wanted to refer to this value up here in cell K1463. But when I do that, it creates this long get pivot data from here. That gets to be a very confusing formula to, to try to read later on. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go all the way back up to the corner of the spreadsheet up here. I'm going to right mouse click and say copy. I'm going to then go back to that same spot and say right mouse click, paste special. And what I'll be choosing is values. And what that does is it converts all my formulas and everything else into a straight value file. So there's no formulas out there remaining. When I choose OK, I lose some of my formatting as well, which at the moment doesn't matter to me. I don't care if I have bold cells or not. But now when I come back here and say, refer back to this cell up here, it's now just got a straight cell reference without the get pivot information. It'll make your formulas much easier to read and much cleaner in the long run. So now that we've completed that step, now we can start building our retention and acquisition uh, formulas over on the right hand side. I'm going to begin with acquisition, and I'm going to start in year 2001 because I'll be comparing 2001 to the previous year of 2000. And my formula begins like this, equals and, an open parenthesis is blank. Now I'm going to check to see, is the cell in year 2000 blank? And is the cell in 2001 not blank? what I'm entering in right now. So it's not is blank and that'll be cell for the cell for 2001. And it comes back with the word false. Now I would prefer to use zeros and ones so I'll just modify that formula to put an asterisk times one in here and if it's true it'll evaluate to a one. If it's not it'll evaluate to zero and I will be getting the numbers that I'll be looking for. So really all I'm after is a whole lot of zeros and ones. Now 2000, let's see, let's do this for each year. So I'll bring this out to the year 2012. And I'll copy this across. And you'll see that in 2008, this was an acquisition. This was considered an acquisition because if I come back into looking at Martha, in 2008 she gave, but she had not given the year before. That's considered an acquisition. Of course, we see she was reacquired. That's a different conversation. We can see she was reacquired in 2011. All right. Let's, now we're going to copy this all the way down for the rest of the cells. When these are all completed, I can then see what my acquisitions were for each particular year. By, filling, by looking for the number ones. I want to add up those number ones and divide them by the number of donors we had in the previous year. So for instance, in the year 2000 we had 86 donors. Well let's see how many acquisitions we had. I'll put a formula in here that adds up cell Q5 through Q1465. So I have 10 new donors in the year 2001. If I want to get the rate on that, I'm going to divide this by the number of donors I had in year 2000. That gives me a rate of about 11.6%. I'll convert that to a percentage, expand the decimal out one, and I'll copy this across to 2012. Next we'll move to the calculation for retention. For that we'll come to the top and again we'll add some more columns in here starting from 2001. 
and this time the retention is calculated where the previous year had a donation and this year has a donation. I'll add the retention title and then I'll begin my formula equals and not is blank and I'll scroll all the way back here so wrote or cell 2000 was not blank and not is blank wrote cell 2001 And again, I get that false reading again, which I'll modify the formula and add the times 1 so that I get just zeros and 1s. Let's fill out the data. And so looking at Martha's record, our very first person here, we see that she was retained. She would be retained in 2012 because she gave in the previous year. And that bears out in the formula in my retention columns where the only one value for Martha is in 2012. All right, let's go add our totals like we did before for acquisition. I'll move to the bottom of the column for the first year. I will sum up AD5 through AD1465. And I find I got 69 new donors in 2001. I will divide that by the number of donors that I had in the year 2000 and I find that my retention rate was 80%. So the calculation for retention and acquisition is now complete. One thing I like to do is get it in a format that makes, a little, makes it a little bit easier to read so I've copied this data from, my, from this tab here to another tab, and I've already completed it. So I've got my years 2001 through 2012. I've transferred over my acquisition and retention rates for each year. And then I decided to put a graph in here as well so that I could see visually how the numbers compare from one year to the next. And my retention rates were pretty good. Big drop off in 2009 and 10, uh, back up in 2011 again. 2012, the year's not over, and so uh, my acquisition and retention rates for the current year are less meaningful. In fact, I may even choose to drop those off of the graph.